businesses often benchmark their performance against other businesses to see how they're doing. Internally, a benchmark or a standard is considered the budget. Last week, we talked about the budget process, how management sets up what their needs are going to be for the coming time period. And they come up with a budget that represents the expected revenues and expenditures during that coming time period. We're going to be talking this week about standard costing. The standard costing uses two factors, uh, quantity and pricing. A good analogy to explain this might be making clothing. Uh, when you make a piece of clothing, you determine how much material goes into it. That would be the quantity. And then the pricing would be the price for that raw material that goes into making the product. So the quantity tells us how much raw material we're putting into making the product and the price standard tells us how much we're going to pay for that raw material. Now we'll put that together and form the standard cost per unit. So if you take the quantity of the raw material used times the price of that raw material, that'll give you the standard cost per unit. So we know that the price of materials fluctuate and even the amount of material uh, that you're going to need to make a product could fluctuate over time. And so in creating these standards or estimates, you need quantitative data uh, to, to support you coming up with those quantity and price estimates. So some potential uh, sources of that are from historical uh, experience. If you've been in the business for a number of years and you know historically it takes... Uh, a certain amount of material to make a unit of your product and uh, the pricing is somewhat stable, uh, you could say based on a historical estimate in the past uh, quarter, in the past year, uh, we use this much raw material. It cost us uh, this much per unit of the raw material, and that's how we're coming up with our standard cost per unit. A historical experience kind of gives you an average uh, over the past history of the business or similar businesses. Another approach would be an engineering study. Uh, in an engineering study, uh, cost estimation is used. It's uh, pretty exact. Usually uh, this is used in like a construction type of business where they're building a, a bridge or a building. And so they know all of the materials that go into doing that. Uh, they list out the materials. They list out the pricing for it. Uh, they list out the labor it's going to need to make those raw materials into the building or into the bridge and they figure out how much time it's going to take them and other various uh, costs that go in to construction and they come up with a, a standard cost per unit uh, that way. That's a much more rigorous process. Uh, if you've ever heard of the term industrial engineering, uh, that's sort of what industrial engineering is uh, in the context of manufacturing. They Industrial engineers go on to the plant floor and they study how long it takes uh, assembly line worker uh, to put together a product from start to finish and all the discrete uh, materials that go into that product and the efficiencies of it. Uh, and they come up with a, a more exact standard cost per unit. Uh, but you'll see here it says sometimes that's too rigorous. Uh, if you think about the cost of that industrial engineer having to perform those studies or the cost of cost estimators uh, in figuring out uh, what construction costs are, those items in and of themselves can be quite costly. And uh, there really has to be solid reasoning behind why you chose an engineering study over just going with uh, estimates based on historical experience. The third source of information is simply getting input from operating personnel. And this is something surprisingly that's often overlooked. Why not go ask the assembly line worker how long it takes them to put together that product or have them uh, record uh, the times over the course of the day or a week uh, that they spend on various activities. Numerous studies have shown that effective managers spend time where their employees are doing work. So if you're in a manufacturing plant, that means that management spends time on the manufacturing plant floor. If you're in a service delivery business, you're spending time at client sites, seeing how your employees are engaging in carrying out the business. 
when coming up with uh, quantity and price standards, you could come up with what's called an ideal standard. And this is basically if all the stars aligned and everything goes perfectly, there's no manufacturing interruptions or business interruptions. Uh, prices remain stable and competitive uh, for the raw materials. Everything goes very well. That's uh, the ideal standard. We have maximum efficiency. Uh, everything's operating perfectly. Uh, of course, we know that's not really how business always operates. That's something that we should strive for, but that's not how business always operates. So uh, probably a more realistic uh, measure is a currently attainable standard, and that can be achieved under efficient operating conditions, but there's allowances made for various types of business interruptions uh, that might occur. Uh, the assembly line breaks down and needs time to get repaired. Uh, raw materials coming in from overseas uh, get held up at customs. Uh, there is a problem with the quality of uh, products uh, that you have coming in for raw materials. Any number of things uh, could happen during a manufacturing process. Uh, you build allowances in for that so that you have an idea of what's a realistic expectation uh, for the standard cost per unit. So I think this picture kind of illustrates it perfectly. If you're a runner, um, you have your personal best. Uh, that's if everything's going well for you. Uh, what your currently attainable standard is uh, for, say, running a mile. And then there's the world record for running a mile, which none of us probably will ever achieve. And that's the ideal standard. So it provides a benchmark for you. Uh, but realistically, uh, on an everyday basis, you're not going to achieve that world record. However, that world record might motivate you. So by now, I'm sure you're asking, why do we need to use a standard costing system? And the answer is to improve planning and control just the same way uh, budgeting helps us with planning and control. Standard costing lets us compare actual costs with budget costs to identify any variances. We'll talk about that and the difference between the actual and planned costs for the actual level of activity. Overall variances can be further broken down into a price variance uh, or a usage or efficiency variance if unit price or quantity standards have been developed. So to calculate the standard cost per unit, we already know that we need the standard quantity and price. And so to facilitate product costing, costs are assigned to products using the quantity and price standards for all three manufacturing costs, direct materials, uh, which we talked about in previous weeks, direct labor and overhead. Standard costing and variance analysis for controlling costs and evaluating performance can have strong ethical implications. So we're creating estimates here. And we talked a lot uh, about ethics in creating estimates and uh, different compensation that might be tied to beating estimates. So management might have an uh, incentive to make the estimates artificially low so that they can always be sure that they'll beat them. On the other hand, management could set estimates artificially high if employees' uh, performance bonuses are based on achieving uh, a certain level of production. So we already said that uh, to calculate the standard cost per unit, we're going to create standard costs for direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. And all of that information is going to come from a standard cost sheet, which provides production data needed to calculate the standard unit cost. The standard cost sheet also shows the quantity of each input that should be used to produce one unit of output. And taking this information, management then should be able uh, to compare the standard versus the actual output for the standard quantity of materials allowed. Uh, it's unit quantity standard times the actual output. And for the uh, standard hours uh, allowed, that would be for labor. It's the unit labor standard times the actual output. So here we have our standard cost sheet. You'll see it has the three sections, direct materials, direct labor, uh, and overhead. In the 
column, it gives us a description of uh, what it is that we're measuring. Uh, in the next column, it gives the standard price. That's the price it's costing us for that material, the labor or the overhead, what the standard usage is uh, per product. Uh, so in this case, we have uh, yellow corn. It costs us a penny for it, and we use 18 ounces of it. So we multiply that together. That gives us the standard cost of 18 uh, cents. I'll skip down to uh, direct labor. Same thing for uh, inspection. Costs us 8 bucks an hour. We need 0 0.01 hours per product. Costs us 8 cents. Uh, I'll skip down to overhead. Uh, same thing there. We uh, must have calculated the variable overhead previously to be $4 an hour. Uh, we need 0 0.02 hours per product. That gives us $0.08. Cents. So we go through those calculations for all three categories. Uh, it gives us the uh, subtotals for each of those categories. We add them all together to get the total standard cost uh, per unit. So here are all the direct materials equal $0.32 cents per unit. Uh, total direct labor, $0.18 cents per unit. Uh, the total overhead was $0.38 cents per unit. We add that all together. Uh, the total standard unit cost uh, in this case is $0.88 cents per unit. And you can apply this to any number of things in manufacturing.